Hi everyone, my name is Sing Tong and I'm a core developer at the Electric Coin Company. Uh, but today I'll actually be talking about another project. So I'll be talking about uh, this technology tree that we've built at Foresight Institute that's mapping out the intelligent cooperation landscape in terms of the core and frontier technologies, the applications that use them, as well as the challenges and open problems that we still face today. So um, I've been helping to build this tree along with my collaborators, Max and Dennis. And um, we're going to take you through basically how we've built it and what we've learned and what's in store. So intelligent voluntary cooperation is a paradigm. Um, it's a paradigm of decentralized and secure cooperation across human and computing entities. So we can think of blockchains today as already the prototypical version of, of this, whereby um, uncoordinated entities are given uh, an environment with secure and a neutral, sec a securely neutral environment in which they can interact in a cooperative and positive some way. So voluntary cooperation means that um, every individual is acting according to their own values and they're not requ required to compromise their values or mis uh, any misalignment. Um, and Foresight Institute's thesis is that this paradigm will extend even further to um, artificial intelligence um, and increasingly sophisticated artificial entities. And we're already seeing this right now to a large extent. Um, a variety of bots um, on Ethereum from your basic crawlers all the way to arbitrage bots or MEV extracting bots. And so the thesis is that um, with intelligent voluntary co cooperation, we can continue to play positive sum games um, with these artificial intelligences. So um, how we get there from our current state today um, is a question we're trying to explore and a question that we're trying to systematically document the answer to via a technology tree. So, um, some of us here may already be, be familiar with the tech tree from the game Civilization. But it basically takes you through uh, eight stages of civilization. And in each stage, there's a bunch of technologies um, arranged in a hierarchical order, meaning that um, some technologies are prerequisites for others. And to progress in the game, you have to unlock each stage of the technology. And you're going through eras um, in parallel to the development of human civilization. Um, and we progress all the way until the information age, which we're in right now. Um, so how we've done it slightly differently um, for this project is we've replaced the tree with a DAG, a directed acyclic graph. And the difference between a tree and a DAG is that each child in a tree can only have one parent, but that's not the case for DAGs. Um, a child can have multiple parents. And for me, that, that means that basically, uh, given a starting node and an end node, there are multiple paths um, between those nodes in a DAG, and that's not the case for a tree. And in other words, it means that the relationship between parent and child is no longer strictly prerequisite. And instead, the more parents you have, the more possible paths you have to get to your destination. So we've built the intelligent cooperation tech tree with four um, large categories of nodes. The first is core technologies. And these are already well-known and well-developed technologies upon which um, applications are being built and being used today. 
And then we have frontier technologies, which are in the research phase, and they're nascent and not in production yet. And they built definitely on top of core technologies and current applications. And finally, we have challenges. These are obstructions, blockers, open problems um, that we need to solve in order to really fulfill the potential of the frontier technologies. And by the way, I'm not sure if this taxonomy is the best, or um, I found it productive. But um, the point of this talk really is to s um, share what we've done and hopefully to inspire comments, suggestions, and contributions. Yeah, and in that spirit, um, this this project is um, an open source project. Everything's on GitHub, and we want collaborations. We want pull requests. Um, and to that end, we've structured the project um, such that it's modular and the data structures are robust, meaning that um, editing one part of it will not break the other parts. Um, th this, this file structure is showing you the nested data structure um, that is um, in the back end uh, that allows you to edit really just specific parts of the project. Well, and this is. Um, as opposed to some earlier methods we've tried um, including drawing one huge picture on Google Slides. So that is that is fragile and every every shape you change on Google Slides affects every other shape. So that's not um, <laughs> sustainable for open source collaboration. We're, as I said, it's also on GitHub and yeah, the benefits of that are version control and attribution. So. Uh, we can revert breaking changes and we can credit contributors as well. So I, I gave a little preview of, um, of our graph visualization software just now. It's using a library called Cytoscape.js developed by some graph theorists. And it has many, um, it, it's very feature rich. So for instance, you have compound notes which can contain child notes. And this captures uh, richer relationships between notes that some are subcategories of others. Um, also, these notes are collapsible. And this might seem like a mundane feature, but to me, it's made a big difference because it's been able to um, let me s zoom in and out of the graph and see connections on different scales. Um, and, and we'll see later on, we'll, we'll, we'll look at the graph later on and see what I mean. And lastly, this is a graph theoretically robust data structure, which means you can do graph, graph theoretical analysis on it. For example, you can find strongly connected subgraphs or weakly connected subgraphs. You can um, do, do things like clustering or find the shortest path between two nodes, all, all kinds of fun stuff like that. Um, we, we get it for free because we, we've used a robust data structure. So now it's time for um, a demo of the working prototype. It's hosted live here, but I'm just going to run it locally. Um, right, so this is the most zoomed out view. And you can see here a bunch of core technologies and um, mostly frontier technologies. And one challenge, data governance. So if I were to quickly um, point out some of the connections here. So um, we have artificial intelligence and decentralized infrastructure coming together to give us decentralized AI. And then similarly, um, decentralized infrastructure and private computation together give us private decentralized computation. It's pretty straightforward. And then. Uh, yeah, artificial intelligence and private computation gives us private AI. So these three on the right are all highly theoretical, um, highly frontier, cutting edge, even speculative, um, and some of the most exciting um, fields. These are also the fields which I have not had the time to really flesh out um, because as you can imagine, documentation is sparser on them. So um, any domain experts or any interested researchers who are seeing this, we welcome uh, your contributions. Um, something interesting that has emerged 
for, uh, um, from this view for me is um, decentralized data governance as a challenge. So really data is so essential and it's, it's so essential to so many of these technologies that it just emerged um, as a, a very important component here. Um, that is a blocker for, for, for many of our technologies. So if we go into a few of these nodes, I think judging by the crowd here, I'm going to go into decentralized infrastructure first. So that was a nested, um, that was a compound node. And inside here, we can have multiple children nodes, each of which can also be a compound node. Um, let me zoom in a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, so these are some areas in, uh, in the category of decentralized infrastructure. Um, I work mostly on privacy, uh, which is, which is not, which is not in here, but which, um, a few technologies here rely on. So for example, um, if we think about scaling, which is a challenge in many blockchains today, um, we have ZK rollups, which rely on zero knowledge proofs. And that's a project that I'm actively contributing to. Uh, people here, I'm guessing, would also be interested in these decentralized society. Um. <coughs> oh, wow. <coughs> yeah, the layout is automatically generated, so it saves me a lot of trouble, but it also removes a lot of control. Um, but we can see here, I've put in Sybil, Sybil resistance is a challenge um, in decentralized societies. All protocols um, that think about identity and that think about scarcity have to contend with Sybil resistance. Uh, we have like soul bound tokens, for example. So um, the nice thing about this structure is that you can capture the metadata as well. Um, and you can put in really as uh, rich descriptions of each node, um, yeah, including links and um, just used for resources. Mm. I know there m there might also be a DSI crowd here, so let's look into. Okay, I'm lost on this graph. Give me one second. Right, and a, a feature I really want is to control F, <laughs> text search on this graph. Um, yeah, which I haven't built yet. Decide, we said. Yeah, so challenges um, in DSI, for example, funding, for example, um, replicating results, um, for example, incentivizing peer review, um, and frontier technologies, projects that work on, for, for instance, the digital, digital computational lab, um, and I think the last note that I want to look at is um, DAOs, which is uh, it's actually a subnote in decentralized societies, I believe. Yeah, so the many different classes of DAOs, um, and each of them, you can write um, examples, resources. Yeah, so this really is a demo and a prototype of the current state of our tech tree. Um, and 
we invite contributions. So this is hosted on GitHub and you can contribute by opening an issue or a pull request. Um, we have templates to make it easy to add a node or an edge. Or if you want to directly edit an existing node or edge, you can make a pull request. We also would really welcome um, feature suggestions. So for example, I, I, I am aware that the GitHub interface is not um, accessible to many people. And a graphic user interface is a lot more intuitive and convenient. So as a user, your perspective on um, useful features, like for example, a button to add a node or um, edit a node, um, control F, or more graph theoretical features like highlighting a shortest path or highlighting all paths involving a certain node or subset of nodes. These are features I want at least. And this would, this would, for example, highlight communities or projects that are very strongly connected, or they they would highlight, yeah, I interesting things like the shortest path um, between two nodes. Yeah, and we we've been hacking on Cytoscape so far, which is an, a, a a wonderful open source project. Um, and if you're an engineer we invite you to come build with us. It's mainly a bunch of JavaScript. And finally, um, the Foresight Institute has uh, bounties up on Gitcoin, and these bounties are derived from the challenges identified in the tech trees. So if you're a builder or a maker in any way, um, please respond to one of our bounties on Gitcoin. And, um, yeah, if you're interested in contributing to this project or finding out more about what Foresight does, um, here's a QR code and link for you. That's all I have. Thank you.